Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, all blessed Shri Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to our Bhagavatam class this morning, this evening, this afternoon, whichever time zone that we are sitting in. Uh, we very happy that you could be part of our um, Bhagavatam class today. This, today we will be discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Verse 16. And the chapter is entitled, Dhritarashtra Quits Home. And without and the class will be given by her grace namrata mataji without further delay we will start into the class and it's all yours Prabhu. Hare krishna thank you ansuya mataji Hare krishna Hare krishna to all the uh, present devotees thank you for kindly blessing me and uh, giving me the opportunity to talk over this verse uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <coughs> Narayanam Namaslutyam Naranjaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatam Vyasam Tato Jayan Udhirahit Nashta Prayesha Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhagavati Nashtiki. Uh, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Shlok, Shloka number 16. Okay. Yudhishthiro Labdarajyo Drishtva Pautram Pulandaram Pratur Beer Loke Pratur Beer Loka Pala Beer Mumade Parayashaya Translation Having won his kingdom and observed the birth of one grandson competent to continue the noble tradition of his family, Maharaj Yudhishthir reigned peacefully and enjoyed uncommon opulence in cooperation with his younger brothers, who were all expert administrators to the common people. Both uh, purported by Srila Bhakti uh, Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Both Maharaj Yudhishthir and Arjuna were unhappy from the beginning of the battle of Kurukshetra, but even though they were unwilling to kill their own men in the fight, it had to be done as a matter of duty, for it was planned by supreme will of the Lord Sri Krishna. After the battle, Maharaj Yudhishthir was unhappy over such mass killings. Practically, <clears throat> There was none to continue the Kuru dynasty after them. The Pandavas, the Kuru dynasty after them, the Pandavas. The only remaining hope was the child in the womb of his daughter in law, Uttara. And he was also attacked by Ashwatthama, but by the grace of the Lord, the child was saved. So after the Settlement of all disturbing conditions and re-establishment of the peaceful order of the state. And after seeing the surviving child, Parikshit, well satisfied, Maharaj Yudhishthir felt some relief as a human being. Although he had very little attraction for material happiness, which is always illusory and temporary. Om Agnana Timiranga Sigma Nangana Shalaka Chakshuran Litanina Chasta Smai Shri Guru Venama Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sapitam Hena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Padam Nayam Tadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padikamalam Shri Guru and Vaisa Master Shri Rupam Sartajatam Sahajan Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sartvaitam Savadutam Parijan Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Patan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakha Vitam Shri 
नमो विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते चंद्रमौली स्वामी नाम नमो विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष श्रीवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्रीयते प्रदाता शिवासादी गौर भक्त हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे हरे थैंक यू डियर डिवोटीज आई सी ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ ऑल ऑफ यू टू कंटिन्यू विद दिस लेक्चर थैंक यू वेरी मच सो इन दिस वर्स श्री प्रभुपाद इज मेंशनिंग दैट Yudhishthir Maharaj and Arjuna was uh, unhappy for they don't they didn't wanted to uh, fight in this uh, battle of Kurukshetra so Arjun and Maharaj Yudhishthir both they both were pure devotees and uh, but for the higher purpose and uh, as a matter of duty they had to fight this battle but they were bewildered for some reason because <clears throat> uh pure devotees do have compassionate heart so they were bewildered for that so arjun uh when he was on the battlefield he requested krishna to take his chariot in the middle of the battlefield so that he can see uh, both sided armies when he saw uh, the uh, armies he was he was into a bewilderment for he saw his own kinsmen so in his bewilderment he his gandiva that was also slipping from his hand so practically he didn't wanted to fight and he gave so many reasons and he portrayed so many questions uh, to lord krishna for not fighting so uh, questions were like how how can i desire how can i desire victory by killing my own kinsmen then uh, he was fearful of uh, indulging incurring the sins he said he how can i engage in uh killing of my own friends relatives my family and uh, be part of the big sin and then he had some community concerns society concerns that uh, with such mass killings traditions will be vanquished uh women women will be degraded there will be unwanted progeny and sisters uh, will fall down <clears throat> and and some such concerns so now i i, I can think of a, an analogy here that um, uh, a doctor all a doctor is all set and ready to do an operation a patient is on the lying on the stretcher and the doctor has all his equipments ready beside and suddenly doctor gets into a uh, bewilderment and he says oh i cannot hurt the patient uh, by putting a cut on his body so no this this cannot happen i mean this is this is a doctor's duty to uh, operate a patient if he is putting a cut on patient's body that is for patient's own betterment and he is going to operate it for patient's recovery so uh, there is no chance of bewilderment in that situation so in the same way arjun being a kshatriya he was meant to protect the society and uh, he should do whatever is necessary for it whatever is required for it uh, so this bewilderment was uh, told as his weakness by shri krishna to uh, arjuna <clears throat> and uh, 
then arjuna ha huh, arjuna is uh, even ready to forgive those aggressors the aggressors word especially used here he he was ready to forgive the aggressors who uh took away or who was who took their kingdom unlawfully who did so much injustice to them who insulted their chaste wife so if a uh, a person according to the laws of dharma even if uh, one kills such aggressors there is no sin in court uh, in self defense but sorry but still being pure devotee arjun and maharaj yudhishthir was uh, not in favor of uh, this mass killing and they tried so many ways so many they tried many in peaceful negotiations with their enemies just so that this war can be avoided but nothing worked out for two reasons it didn't worked out one was uh, duryodhan who was very envious of pandavas and he was who was not even ready to give even a piece of land which was uh, which can rest on the tip of a needle so he was that envious and second was krishna himself wanted this yuddha because it was a dharma yuddha because he wanted to annihilate all the uh, demoniac kings and uh, the disturbing factors of the society who supported those uh, demoniac kings so he wanted to annihilate all of them so that was the arrangement of krishna and so krishna says to arjuna that um even if you don't if you don't kill all these men uh i will kill and they are anyways killed by me so he showed his virat roop and he he showed him that i have already killed them so there is no point in lamenting so because it's my will and you just fight as a matter of duty you have to do that so in the same way uh, yudhishthir maharaj he was also overcome with the lamentation after the big massacre that happened in the war so uh, some of the verses for yudhishthir maharaj uh, okay uh, mata ji can we go to uh, canto 1 uh chapter number 8 verse 48 252 just the translation 48 verse 48 yeah 48 to 51 or 42 that is uh, the lamentation of this yeah so verse 48 says a uh, king minister said oh my lord uh, i am the most sinful man just see my heart what uh, which is full of ignorance this um, this body which is ultimately meant for others has killed many many phalanxes of men so practically the uh, mahabharat says that there were 64 crores of men who were killed in the uh, battle of kurukshetra and so this this was the biggest war in the history and uh, <laughs> i hope there is no other war like that but uh, yes there was a big time mass killing and verse 49 says i have killed many boys brahmanas well wishers friends parents uh preceptors and brothers though i live uh, millions of years i will not be relieved from the hell that awaits me from all these sins so parikshit maharaj is really feeling <clears throat> horrified by this uh, big huge mass killing further he says there is no sin for a king who kills 
for the right cause who is engaged in maintaining his citizens but this injunction is not applicable to me so he is humble enough actually if the war if if the uh, dutiful participation in the war is uh, for the kshatriyas uh, that was a dutiful participation because that was the will of the lord and a king uh, for the right cause for uh, for the dharma if they have to kill some aggressors that is not considered as sin but still uh, parikshit uh, sorry uh, yudhishthira maharaj was humble enough that he was uh, still considering that that was not applicable to him and he will suffer for millions and billions of lifetimes i have uh, was 51 i have killed many friends of women i have thus caused enmity to such an extent that it is not possible to undo it by material welfare work was 52 as it is not possible to filter muddy water from mud sorry muddy water through mud or purify a wine stained pot with wine it is not possible to counter react the killing of men by sacrificing animals so previously there were ashwamedh yagnas performed ashwamedh uh, sacrifices and uh, go make sacrifices ashwamedh sacrifices is a horse uh, sacrifice and go make is the bull sacrifice so uh, in scriptures it is mentioned that uh, this uh, ashwamedh yagna or go make yagna can even provide relief uh, from the sin like uh, brahma hatya so maharaj yudhishthir this way he is demonstrating his anxiety that even ashwamedh yagna cannot help me so here uh, you know one can portray a question that uh, uh, arjun and maharaj maharaj yudhishthir are, are they recognizing themselves on the body, bodily platform due to which they are facing this be- uh, bewilderment so so the answer is no um, they are not recognizing them as on body pla- bodily platforms because they are pure devotees and pure devotees is a, they have a quality called compassion so they have a very soft and compassionate heart due to which they are facing this kind of lamentation this kind of bewilderment so and this uh, bewilderment is going to lead to a higher purpose for which uh, you know this is acceptable uh, the higher purpose is uh, to arjun krishna is going to reveal the bhagavad gita and uh, to yudhishthir maharaj uh, bishma dev is going to render the teachings so there was a higher purpose in this and even even demigods they are very pious uh, they uh they still have they are still not free from uh, material desires uh, they are very pious they have uh, performed the very uh, you know uh, pious activities but still they are not free from material desires and that is why they are demigods because they want to enjoy they are given those uh, you know administrative positions to uh, you know fulfill their uh desires their personal desires so um yeah so arjun and uh imara yudhishthir they they have they are responsible enough they are humble enough to take the responsibility of the big, big uh mass killing that has happened but actually there is no sin incurred for them there was another concern for yudhishthir maharaj that uh, he was concerned about the successor of the kuru dynasty the uh, kuru dynasty uh, in the battlefield all the sons of pandavas they all were killed only the uh, son of abhimanyu in the womb of uttara was surviving and which was the last hope 
of uh, pandavas and that also was uh, attacked by ashwatthama by release by releasing the brahmastra so even uh, that was taken care of by krishna because krishna is the ultimate protector for all and is a it's it is uh, said that mare krishna rakhe ke rakhe krishna mare ke so this whole scene, scenario of kurukshetra is well portraying that that uh, uh, on the battlefield of kurukshetra uh, krishna wanted to uh, have the mass killing he he wanted this for the dharma uh, so in spite of willing of even uh, uh, yudhishthir maharaj and the warriors like arjun he could not stop the mass killing so they they had to be killed that was the will of the krishna and parikshit maharaj who was attacked by brahmastra the deadliest weapon but still he was protected because krishna was willing that krishna wanted to protect him so uh, you know no one can be saved uh if krishna wants want to kill and no one can be killed if krishna wants want to protect them so uh and and there is uh there's something in the last part also of this uh, uh purport that after all the disturbing conditions and after seeing the surviving child and the heir to the state but uh, maharaj parikshit he was satisfied and relieved as a human being and uh, it is said that he um uh, he did not have any uh, can can we go back to the verse mataji 113 16 i think it it said that he had very little attraction for the material happiness yeah uh, which is temporary and illusion yeah so he had uh, although he had very little attraction for material happiness which is always illusory and temporary so here it is talking about material happiness uh which is not real happiness which is illusory which is temporary so it is simply the sensation by uh by contact of the sense objects yeah um this this one verse um yehi samsparsha ja yehi samsparsha ja bhoga dukh uh, can we go to the verse 5.22 bhagavad gita dukh yonaya evata uh, i cannot remember yeah मटीरियल senses o son of kunti such pleasures have and have a beginning and an end so the wise man is not delighted in them so uh, we take an example simple example then uh, when we eat something very palatable there is a temporary or momentary pleasure to our tongue but that is momentary that is not going to last forever so that is just a sensation not a real happiness so one can again question here what is the difference between a uh, material happiness and the uh, real happiness or the spiritual happiness so material happiness is temporary spiritual happiness is eternal then uh, material happiness is the sensation in the mind uh, where mind gives you the false illusion of the feeling of uh, pain or suffering 
uh, sorry pain or uh, pleasure so that is that is material happiness and uh, spiritual happiness comes from uh, our original nature which is a uh, devotional service to to the uh, supreme lord rendering devotional service to the supreme lord um, then material happiness arises from uh, three modes of material nature but spiritual happiness it arises when we go beyond three modes of material nature so uh, it is said in this uh, last line the wise man do not delight in that so the wise man the transcendent place the yogis one who are uh, have one who who are you know in the process of developing relationship with uh, krishna those are yogis wise men they do not get disturbed by it uh, because this happiness is on the platform of the soul the the spiritual happiness is on the platform of the soul and um, this this uh, happiness is obtained by bhakti yoga uh, which is recommended by our acharyas <clears throat> in fact this is the only way uh, not one of the way but is it's the only way um uh, uh by which you know um we can um, indulge into the bhakti yoga and bhakti yoga is achieved by engaging in the devotional service unto the supreme lord shrimad bhagavatam says that uh, uh, there are nine different ways of this process and that is uh, shravanam kirtanam smaranam pad sevanam archanam vandanam uh, dasyam sakhyam and atmanivedanam and uh, out of all these the easiest uh, ones are smaranam and kirtanam which is hearing and chanting and even easiest in that is uh according to the uh, scriptural uh, you know uh, injunctions um most easy is chanting and hearing of the holy name the hum maha mantra that is hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so that is the easiest method given uh in this uh yuga so based on uh, the kali kali samtaran uh, upanishad uh, in the conversation between uh, brahma ji and uh, narad muni the brahma ji uh, sorry narad muni is trying to uh, inquire here from brahma ji that how to overcome the evil influences of uh, kali yuga so brahma ji here replies that uh, only by hearing and chanting of the 16 syllabled hare krishna mantra one can overcome the influence of kali yuga and uh, in further in naradya puran uh, even narad muni uh, specifies that hare naam hare naam hare naam eva kevalam kalo nasti eva nasti eva nasti eva tiranetha there is no other way there is no other way there is no other way to get rid of this effects of kali yuga other than the holy name so with this uh, i conclude thank you for hearing me patiently uh, thank you mata ji thank you the devotees took me a while to get to the unmute button thank you so much would like to ask I'm going to go back to the verse so that uh, we can actually um, ask questions or that or anything else. Would like to ask devotees. Thank you for a very nice class, uh, Namrata Mataji, for these nice points that you have shared. Um, I, I do like the point that you meant about the compassion part of Arjuna and Yudhisthira. 
That was a very good realization. Thank you. Would like to ask devotees if any questions, any comments, um, uh, if even a takeaway or something that we heard in the class that is like, oh, wow, you know, like it just hit you. Please unmute yourself and share with us or you can raise your hand. I will um, stop sharing. That way we can see each other, hear from each other, and uh, learn from each other. So any questions, any comments, any reflections? I can uh, start off by asking, um, Namrata, if, if you can shed some light, you know, you talked about aggressors and how um, Maharaj Yudhisthira was even lamenting on the aggressors and it, that which shows the deep level of compassion. Um, how can we develop that deep level of compassion? Uh, thank you for asking this question. I'll, I'll just make an attempt to uh, answer it in the smallest uh, way, also the smallest intelligence I have. Intelligence I have. So, um, uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj and Arjuna, they uh, aggress, they mentioned uh, Duryodhan and Dushasana and the uh, Kauravas as aggressors because they had uh, done so many things which are unlawful, which are not a good example for the society. So uh, even in today's society, we see that there are a lot of things going on in 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 uh, context with what we have talked in uh, Bhagavatam or we have seen in Mahabharata. So uh, yes, uh, aggressors should be taught a lesson, uh, but that should be in the criteria of self-defense or protection, not uh, as a point of revenge. So this is one point I, I wanted to mention and having compassion for them. If, if we don't have compassion for them, then we will go to the uh, factor of revenge. So it is very necessary for us uh, to keep in the mind, keep in our mind that Aggressors also do need second chances. So um, for which we should keep a compassionate heart for them. Krishna also do have that. Uh, if, if we, from millions of lifetimes, we are, we are uh, indulging into so many sins, but still Krishna gives us, gave us chances. So uh, if we don't have compassion towards others, uh, yes, the aggressors should be taught a lesson, but in a way that uh, they don't rebel or that is that doesn't uh, comes into the revenge category. Thank you for, uh, you know, I hope this is satisfying. Yeah, thank you for saying that point because I, I went back to read the verse again and... Um the the purport you know where Sri Prabhupada said that even though Yudhisthira and Arjuna were unhappy but they uh, and they and if even though they unwillingly killed their own but they did it uh, out of um out of duty so what of actually duty. shows that um that uh Krishna was being compassionate towards those aggressors by re relieving them sometimes we think that i think um you know being hard or this or that is actually wrong but actually if we really want to help somebody come out of that as they call out of that off that platform <laughs> then they need some correction and without co correction it's very hard you know and in fact what's coming to your mind is like a child right if you know that, that a child is doing something wrong and we don't correct the child, then uh, how will the child know what's right, what's wrong? But sometimes we have to be very strict with the child and correct the child and sometimes punish them, you know, whether it means punishment or timeout or 
whatever you want to call it, it can be hard on the child, but it's compassion because we want to straighten them up, lack of a better word, you know. So I was just thinking, yeah, you know, even though Maharaj Yudhishthira was such a compassionate devotee, but he did it out of duty to show compassion for the aggressors. So that was what was coming to my mind. So thank you for, you know, for that point. Thank you. Yes. Even Srila Prabhupada, uh, he was he was so compassionate that even our our gurus they are so compassionate because uh, we come from different backgrounds and we have we before coming to Krishna consciousness we might have performed so many things maybe which are not to be which are uh, breaking the four regulative principles mm -hmm. but still they are compassionate enough to. Uh, shelter us so that is their compassion that's a good point yeah absolutely you know the the guru tolerates all our stuff <laughs> and then <laughs> and like you said we come from different backgrounds with different stuff and then he has to deal with all the stuff and sometimes the stuff he has to be pretty hard you know sometimes some some, some you know some might get a little more leniency some may will be really hard. I, I remember a spiritual master one time saying that I cannot be hard to all my disciples equally, then they will leave. <laughs> Based on their characteristics, I know who to be hard and who not to be hard, but that's compassion. And, yes. You know, yes. and you know, and that's that's the concept of hard love and soft love. And sometimes those that are thick skin can take the hard love. <laughs> So I was really uh, thinking about that, you know, sh thinking more as as you were speaking. So thank remember, you. I could remember with this Guru Maharaj. Uh, I think he he mentioned it once or twice in, in his uh, daily lectures that there was one person. Uh, I I don't remember exactly the number he mentioned, but he had performed so many he was a doctor and he performed so many abortions in his entire life and nobody was ready to uh, give him initiation but somehow that uh, the person could actually not take up krishna consciousness but but still with it we have the examples of jagai and madai and the, the compassion a compassion is for them too so these aggressors are there in the society but uh without compassion there there won't be anything like going back home back to godhead so we we need compassion and the pure devotees uh have to shower that yeah, even in the case of jagai and mother a very good point namata is you know when lord chaitanya forgave him he absorbed all his sins this wrongdoings that his body turned black that much he had that much sense and but the lord was so merciful that he even took all that and allowed his golden form body to be blackened by all those sins so yeah compassion is uh pretty deep pretty deep yeah thank you anyone would like to say something would like to share a thought would like to share a reflection any questions on it any thoughts on it this is a, this is a very nice um verse actually you know on uh, how uh you know like even if we think about uh um Draupadi, right all her five sons were killed and the only living hope was uh abhimanyu <laughs> and uh she didn't want to hurt the mother of ashwatthama just wanted to hurt the aggressor you know and so if you see the compassion even on Draupadi's part was really powerful I think sometimes as as devotees we tend to get confused between you know the hard love and the soft love and that's the tough part that's the challenge sometimes we go through that but hard love is also mercy you know when the spiritual master or when a senior devotee chastises that's love it's not like they don't like us <laughs> it's just love. Yes. very true yeah thank yeah. you for mentioning that i think uh, yeah 
I haven't yet opened up my account for so uh, big chastisement, but yes, I do know that um, it's it's a blessing, it's a mercy. So um, maybe I many times contemplate uh, when I see that uh, Guru Maharaj or other gurus in, in the ISKCON they they do chastise. So I I, I uh, think on my part that. Oh, am I ready for this chastisement? Uh, is it because of that I'm I'm not chastised? So maybe my Guru Maharaj is uh, making me ready for that chastisement. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. It's it's, it, it's mercy. It is definitely a mercy. Very yeah, amazing. Yeah, I I've gotten my share of it. So I <laughs> completely know what's it like, <laughs> completely. Anyone else would like to share a thought, a realization, a reflection, you know, something that's coming to your mind, something that you want to share about from this class, something that, um, you know, a takeaway. Uh, please do unmute yourself and do share. Yes, yeah, Sukhavaha Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Abhra Maharaj, and uh, all glories to Assembly devotees. Thank you, Namrata Mataji. It was really nice class, and really some good points were discussed and highlighted. Uh, just uh, on this point of aggressors, it is like, um, okay, the pure devotees can have comp com compassion on them, but uh, for us, Lord, practicing devotees it's very hard especially if suppose someone has done something to us i find it really difficult to forgive that person <laughs> how how everyone else is dealing with that situation because yesterday class guru maharaj mentioned about it that um focus on the devotional activities uh, and you will forget what has happened to you i agree with that 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 temporary time period we do forget it but then we come back to our position and then like the things just come back to us so i would really like to see how other people deal with that can you restate your question again uh Sukhubha? i'm trying to get a gist of it i apologize so if suppose something has happened to like you know someone has hurt us say in in the life or it's not minor thing but if it is something major has happened to us and it we find it sometimes it's really difficult to forgive that person you know like um chastisement from the guru maharaj or the adult is okay we can manage all those things we understand that that is a deficiency on our part or some some bad manners we have but uh something what we haven't done anything about it and somebody has um hurt us um how do i give you an example like you know especially at work sometimes you find some difficult person to deal with uh and they keep on putting you down all the time all the time it's it's not easy to to be compensated compensate to that person <laughs> uh, we can be we can uh, get involved in devotional activities when we leave the work but when we are back to work that situation is back in the thing and how how everyone else manages i would love to see how do you deal in that particular situation that's a tough one Sukhubha. i'll have Na uh, namrata go first and i can add later on if she, if she wants me to thank you uh i think Mataji, if you would like to go first um you know so i i go through that same thing with one of my co-worker and i've been going through it since uh for about 10 years now <laughs> <laughs> same and same co-worker thank god she works re remotely in a different state i'm so grateful mm -hmm. for that but that's a blessing in disguise <laughs> um um what i have you know i i have to really work on uh, protecting my heart mm -hmm. I had to work on that. I had to really, first I had to really analyze why is, what is it 
about her that's really making me upset. I mean, you know, it's work. It's not like these are devotees that I live with or that, that I see every single day. You know, it's work and, you know, you get a paycheck and done, you know, but then you got to deal with this person and I, and I still deal with her, unfortunately. But initially I had to really learn what is it about her that's really irking me and really bothering me. And I really had to do what I was taught by my spiritual master called internal dialogue to really go in and really assess what is it about her character and then I really realized that, you know, that's her lower side. You know, mm -hmm. the, they're dealing with devotees, I mean, people, karmis who are caught up in the modes. So mm -hmm. then I realized is that the more I allowed myself to be bothered, I was getting pulled into her mode, mm -hmm. lack of a better word. So I had to really strengthen myself to not let mm -hmm. her crap, lack of a better word, get to me. Mm -hmm. So I had to really make myself strong by really... Um, uh, uh, first taking shelter of the holy name, mm -hmm. really chanting, really reading, being in right association to make myself stronger because mm -hmm. I had to make myself stronger to the point where she can write, she can say whatever she wants to say, but I'm going to stay on the point of the discussion. I'm not going to get, allow her mm -hmm. to swerve me, mm -hmm. you know? That is what I had to work on because when we allow someone to swerve us, we have weakened our position. Mm. I had to really, it took me a few years. It wasn't overnight, by the way. Mm. It took me a few years. So now, you know, whenever she, and, and, and she's known, this coworker of mine is known to send emails. And when she sends emails, she'll put like 15,000 exclamation marks in bold. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it used to irk me uh, seriously it used to irk mm -hmm. me now I just you know what I do I just delete it <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I just delete it and if it relates to me I'll just breathe because I know mm -hmm. it's, it's going to trigger me mm -hmm. so what I do is I just take a step back away from the email I breathe and I say okay Krishna you got to give me the strength to work to this lady again Mm -hmm. you know and I read the email and I pick out what is the content that she's addressing not the emotions mm -hmm. and I reply with the content without the emotion problem solved after that she can go to anyone I am done so mm -hmm. so sometimes we have to make ourselves strong so that we don't allow someone's um stuff to carry our emotions you know mm -hmm. so that's one thing but now that's what karma is with devotees sometimes we come across that situation what i have learned is that um compassion comes hard and soft you know you know Prabhupada says i mean even shila rupa goswami nectar of devotion nectar of instruction says that when someone else has offended us uh krishna doesn't forgive unless mm -hmm. that person asks for forgiveness it's like incomplete you know like like we have been told right when when devotees take initiation um you know after initiation they have to give some duction mm -hmm. to the pundit if not it's an mm -hmm. incomplete process mm -hmm. so the same thing krishna takes it very he says you know if you offend my devotees you've offended me mm -hmm. so in, in order for us to really clear that um that account mm -hmm. We have to put in good account, good debits, and remove the bad debit, you know, remove the bad stuff. So in order mm -hmm. for that to happen, uh, there has to be forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And the only way for that person to, you know, or to forgiveness is to happen is to forgive yourself, relieve yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't carry that person's burden. That is the mm -hmm. key point. Because when we own the other person's burden to become our burden, then we are saying, okay, your problem is my problem. So mm -hmm. I'm going to have a grudge. So we have to really let go and, and um, forgive ourselves first. Mm -hmm. Now, when we forgive ourselves, that doesn't mean that that person doesn't have to ask for forgiveness. They have to, because then the account is not clear with Krishna. Mm -hmm. yeah. Krishna says, you know, you offend the devotee, you've offended me. So they still have to clear the account. Now, when they're going to clear the account, that's on them. <laughs> Hmm. we have no control over it but it's very important that we let go of the baggage i hope that helps Sukhava. I, I don't know if i answered your question no 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 very good points thank you i'm so sorry that i can't put my cameras on no it's, it's fine working. it's fine yeah um, Namrata, you know you can definitely add more or you can go ahead Sukhava, if you have more to add 
Yeah, just, uh, no, I, I completely agree with your points, like with the work colleague and stuff. But, yeah. you know, luckily you have that person working remotely and I've got that person working. Personally. I know. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. And every <laughs> single time we have, we have to go to our seniors to sort out the issues, which is so annoying. Like, you I know, imagine that it is like so petty that uh, she how do I explain that everything everything she puts it in the diary and then you know I don't have bloody time to do everything you know <laughs> what everything. yeah you know what Sokova Prabhu of someone like that they are bitter they are it's so, so they make everyone else's bitter. life bitter around them because if they are bitter everybody around them has to be bitter if they're not bitter they're like no this is not, not normal i'm bitter why are you happy <laughs> you know that's <laughs> exactly. exactly i mean it exists so when when we go through that we really really have to put up our our shield mm. our coverture as they say we mm. really have to put up our coverture and not let her bitterness get to us and that really means, it, you know, really internally strengthening ourselves, not letting her nonsense get to us, deal with the stuff, you know, and just do the business, you know, good morning, good evening. This is what that, that done, you know, and don't let her get to you because she just wants to see you bitter because she's bitter. That is absolutely true. And everyone knows about it, like, you know, but uh, it's like when it comes to the thing that is, you know, it's, it's quite bad ed environment to work with uh yeah. you feel oh my god again <laughs> yeah i know i know <laughs> well, yeah so yeah. yeah it's it's like we can forgive people up to this up to the level oh, yes. but then like uh after a while when we have to see them again i don't know how to behave with them as well in, you know, in, in, in case of devotees as well i find it like okay fine um uh, like I will take it out of my mind completely. But when you come next to me again and your behavior is not changed, how am I going to react with you? I mean, you know, respond I to you, asked, forget the reaction. <laughs> I asked this question to Radhanath Swami back in 2005, 2006. Okay. <laughs> and uh, he gave me a question and, and I was very happy with his response. Mm -hmm. He said to me, Anasuya, you can definitely forgive. Mm -hmm. But you don't forget. Yeah, we can't forget. <laughs> he says, you be cautious. Mm -hmm. And then I said to I asked him, I said, Marge, but even when you're cautious, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how can you be genuine? Exactly. <laughs> right. And he says, you be cordial and you be aware, but you be nice. You be nice. You be respectful because they are devotees. So you mm -hmm. have to be respectful. But you still have your guards on and i asked the same question i think three years later to bhakti mark swami <laughs> <laughs> believe me I've, I've gotten my share of you know issues that i had to deal with <laughs> and bhakti mark swami gave me a beautiful answer mm -hmm. he said to me sit anasuya imagine that you are no i still remember his response he says mm -hmm. imagine that you are no, in um in a ballroom dancing Mm -hmm. and you are smiling but you're not bumping into each other's elbows oh and i said got it got it <laughs> got it <laughs> so he says you are dancing and you're smiling mm -hmm. he says when, when you ballroom dance you smile you look very mm -hmm. nice and you're dancing mm -hmm. and you're being polite and you're being cordial but you don't bum the elbows i said Maharaj, got it <laughs> you know <laughs> that always stayed with me till this very day so whenever i come across devotees that i have issues mm -hmm. i smile mm -hmm. and i do not bump the elbow i'm out of their way <laughs> <laughs> i've done my pronouns i've been nice you're devotee hurry ball okay done let's go next business <laughs> you know i'm done <laughs> uh, yeah like because we have to see the devotee in them you know no, they, i mean <laughs> they said yes to krishna we have to see the devotee on them and if we remember in nectar of instruction one of the uh, verses it says you know even when we see a devotee and we do not acknowledge them is an offense hmm. Hmm. so at least give them the acknowledgement and then 
Haribo wishes and then don't bump the elbow, go your way. <laughs> so that I think I'm doing the right way then. <laughs> yeah. That all not, not with staying me. with them for a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I st and I still today I apply those principles. <laughs> I really you know, do. I, I think yeah. we have been through a lot of similarity with us. <laughs> yes. I think we have Sukhavaha. I think we have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amrita, you can please add, Mataji. Go ahead. Yeah. Every Anybody else can add as well. Namrata, Mataji, first you go. And then if anyone else has got anything to share, we would like to hear, you know. Thank you for uh, uh, giving your wonderful views. <laughs> uh, this helped me as well. But I think this is a question which I think everybody would have asked either his counselor, either Guru Maharaj. Um, <laughs> and um, one answer what Guru Maharaj gave me um, and that person, it is always between you and Krishna. So <clears throat> you are meant to purify through that person. So uh, if if you see that way, then uh, maybe a lot of things uh, can be solved in that context as well. And about forgiveness is, uh, we don't want to carry, if we have to go to Krishna, we can't carry the baggages with us. So anyways, if, if we want to go to Krishna, we have to get rid of those baggages. Uh, so it is very necessary for us to forgive. And uh, and I really like the your point of not hitting the elbows. Bhakti <laughs> so, Mark Swami ki jai. He saved me. Yeah. <laughs> he let me. He really did. I have. I, I did even because every one of us, uh, yeah. is, people say or not say, every one of us has at least one or two persons in our life which are really not tolerable. So uh, that is for our own purification, and I, it, it, and I remember like when, when I first read Bhagavad Gita, I like, okay, uh, this this verse applies to this one. <laughs> this applies to this one. Where am I here? <laughs> so <laughs> I go through it and like, okay, the, uh, so that was my first realization. Where am I here? So uh, that is why I, I could uh, really understand when Guru Mahat said that it is always between you and Krishna. So uh, we have to really tolerate that uh, being a devotee. If And yes, he said, only if um, you are not able to tolerate, then you can change the situation, but that is not the solution. Because if... Uh, because that is uh, due to the karma. And if um, if we avoid that situation, something else will come up. So uh, our, um, our prime uh, focus should be on tolerating or let it go off uh, what is coming to us as a purification. And prayers are always there. So uh, I had one uh, devotee when she and she was really, really um, uh, fed up with the person, uh, though not a devotee, but she was, she was completely fed up and she could not get rid of that person by any means. And she constantly prayed to Krishna. And there was an arrangement for her. So prayers really helped. So I this is what I can do. Namrata, you made a very good point. point. You made an excellent point, Namrata, that also made me think. And then we'll go to Silfish Prabhu. I did not forget you, Prabhu. Um, and I always look forward to your, to your questions, by the way. So I'm happy you have your hand up some because you ask really deep questions. But another point that you mentioned, Namrata, that I could add to your, your uh, question, Sukhava Prabhu, is um, when you mentioned, Namrata, that is between you and Krishna, Mm -hmm. The other half of Bhakti Mark Swami's answer to me was to pray to Lord Nasringadev. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, pray to Lord Nasringadev and ask him to heal the pain or whatever you're going through. And then he said to me, um, when you pray to Lord Nasringadev, 
Imagine that he is using his claws and is ripping your mind and your heart and removing all the pain. Mm -hmm. And um, I did that. I did mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. I every morning I would go to my altar and sadly I would not look at Jagannath Bali Subhadra <laughs> and not go Nithai. I'll go straight to Nashingadev. <laughs> I was so bad because I was really in a lot of, you know, going through a lot of stuff mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. And I pray to Lord Ashringadev every day for 18 months. Mm -hmm. And I begged him, you know, rip my mind and my heart and remove this pain because it's really, really heavy. You know, mm -hmm. release me. Mm -hmm. And after 18 months, Sukhavaha Prabhu, you will not believe mm -hmm. it. I had a I had a, in, I had a difference with a very, very senior devotee. It was very hard for me to say this devotee in person. And after praying for 18 months, when I saw that devotee at the Ratiyatra, I was able to offer my dandavats to that devotee. Wow. Really works. Mm -hmm. Really works. And Lord Nasringadev is real. He's one of my favorite uh, Ishtadevas. You know, like I really love Nasringa Chaturdasi. It's like one of my favorite festivals because it, it, mm -hmm. I, mean, I saw it as a living example in my life. So at the end of the day, whatever issues we have is between me and Krishna. And secondly, also, everything happens for a reason. Hmm. Like Namata was saying, you know, we have so many hmm. anarthas that we hmm. don't know that we have this lack of tolerance, lack of this. So Krishna's going to throw wrenches at us to, you know, okay, you want to come to me? You got to get that thing out of your mind, hmm. you know? So he's throwing all those wrenches to really help us to really go deep and realize how to remove all those anarthas. So he's mm -hmm. going to create situations, whether it be work or devotee or family or husband or children, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to really help us to really come to the platform that we have to come to, to mm -hmm. surrender more and more to the Lord. So everything is planned by the Lord. Like we don't see it right now when it's happening, but for me, at least I didn't. But when I, when I look back, like it happened, mm -hmm. like I'm like, Krishna, you knew what you were doing 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now I see why you did that to me. <laughs> so it becomes very real. But yeah, it, everything is planned for us to grow and to mm. remove our narthas, our attachments, our, you know, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I yeah. No, that is so true. I, I completely agree with Namrata Mataji's point that yeah. this is between you and Krishna. And, Absolutely. Uh, and the simple prayers, you know, I didn't even ask anybody. My mom told me about this one, and I really, really so grateful with my for my mom to give me that prayers. That uh, she said that anytime if you feel like that, just go to Krishna and pray to Krishna that something I must have done in my previous life to hurt that person this much. And mm -hmm. that is the reason that person is acting in the three modes of material nature and doing the same thing to you. So yeah. it's not that person's fault. So first of all, it's easy for you to forget that, forgive that person that, okay, fine. It's not their fault. This is all three modes of material nature is yeah. and Krishna's arrangement. That is true. I understood that. And then I was praying every single time that please Krishna forget, yeah. forgive me if whatever I've done to that soul in past. And I, I beg the forgiveness. I beg the forgiveness from their soul. I can't go and say straight away that, oh, forgive me to that mm -hmm. soul, definitely. But when I see her, I used to say that prayer, that Krishna in front of you, I'm asking, beg uh, the um, forgiveness from this particular soul. Please forgive me. And um, I can tell you one thing, good thing is that person left the job. <laughs> Hare Krishna. You know, that happened to me too one time, Sukha Mahaprabhu, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so that, oh that really works. <laughs> yes, very nice. My Thank karma's you. finished. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> my goodness, good one. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so, Krishna Prabhu, please go ahead, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, everyone. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, glory to Guru Maharaj, oh, glory to Prabhupada. I just wanted to comment to Sukhava Prabhu as well. Like, I think we've all been in interactions with devotees and we've been hurt in some way or another. And what I've realized from a compassionate point of view, for that person to be acting out and hurting you, they're hurting inside, like maybe they've had trauma. If they're doing this day in, day out, like a work colleague, they're traumatized in some way as well. So they're like a soul as well, but they've been traumatized through material conditioning, whatever's happened to them in their lives. But that doesn't excuse their behavior either, because they're adults. 
So we have to set boundaries with them. And sometimes we have to have difficult conversations with them. So you can't treat me like this. I'm a human being as well. And, you know, we have sometimes that has to be said to people. And the other thing I think of is also like going the extra mile with people. So like, as Anasuya Mataji mentioned, like she was able to give dandavats to that uh, senior devotee eventually. So for me, I've been able to go up, up to the people who've hurt me and I said Hare Krishna to them. And, you know, just smile at them. And obviously, walk, as we said, don't touch elbows, so you walk away. But just being, you know, it's like making that coffee for that person at work who's irritating you all the time. You know, to just make them a coffee and put it on their desk. Sometimes we have to go an extra mile and they'll see that actually, you know, we're not bad people, where it's just interactions and karmas unfolding and things like that. And like I said, sometimes, sometimes your purification is to stand up for yourself. You know, it's not always about, you know, sort of being meek as it were, because, you know, when you think spirituality or devotees, we think we have to be like nice to everyone and meek all the time and humble, but, you know, if you're really being offended, and you know, like Arjun had to fight a whole war because <laughs> you know, his family was offended. So, you know, we have the example there as well. So, I yeah. love your point, Silpesh Prabhu. Like I said, I, I knew you'd come with a powerful point because you <laughs> always do. <laughs> Setting boundaries. It's so yeah. true. It's so mm -hmm. true because, you know, what I realized over the years is that each of us have the Paramatma within our hearts. And if we weaken our position and we allow it to be um, uh, dustpans, you know, sometimes, like you said, as devotees, we think I let them walk all over me, let them kick me, let them trash me, you know, but no, we are not supposed to be a broom and a dustpan. Yeah. And sometimes we make ourselves that way because once we do that, we are allowing the other devotee to disrespect the paramatma within our hearts which is not right. So the good point that I like so much, yes, we, we got to set bond and stand up for ourselves that yes, I don't like to be treated this way because then we make ourselves strong. And sometimes we have a hard time really thinking that, you know, I don't like this behavior. You know, I don't like to be treated this way because this is what it does to me. Like we have to have this really open conversation you know, with devotees to say that this is not how you treat me. I don't appreciate it. Like really, really, I, I have actually said that. I've actually said to a couple of devotees, you know, when, you know, when this happened, I feel this way and I don't mm -hmm. feel, and I don't want to be treated that way, you know, like, and what I've learned over the years um, in conflict resolution is the choice of words because devotees, you know, when, when they do something wrong to us, Rather than saying you, 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 we flip it around where we say is when this happened, I feel this way and I don't appreciate it. Hmm. And then they're like, yeah. oh, okay, because they don't like mm -hmm. to be blamed. But if but if we switch the words and say, when this happened, I feel this way, I feel blah, blah, I feel demoralized or something. I don't like the way I'm treated. You, you have reinstated your position. Mm -hmm. because we are at the end of the day we are spiritual warriors when we say yes to krishna we are declaring war with maya so mm -hmm. we are spiritual warriors so spiritual warriors are not supposed to be weak we're supposed to be strong mm -hmm. so we take no crap <laughs> 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 you know but uh, but along with that we be compassion but compassion doesn't mean that you can walk all over me you know mm -hmm. so it's a very fine line but it's uh, definitely um, one way I feel that, you know, we have to, you know, and these kind of discussions are so important because it also helps us to release our pain, you know, mm -hmm. with our true, anarthas, true. Yeah. you know, how to deal with being more tolerant, how to deal with being more compassionate, how to be with more understanding, you know, like really getting into the heart, the heart connection. True. Because that is Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. That is Krishna consciousness. It's, it's all about the heart. It's, it's it's all about the heart. You know? Yeah. yeah. And everybody goes to these types of situation. It's not oh, yeah. <laughs> like me and you have been through it or Namrata Mataji has been through it. Everybody goes through it and we all need to learn how to deal with them as well, you know, basically. Otherwise, 
I've seen people having mental issues with these types of condition as well. Yes. You know, it's so hard to bear with these things. Yes. Like, because it's a day to day. It is very sad, you know, and especially mm-hmm. with young people. Especially yeah. with the young people. I know. Many, many years ago, I think it was like my, my daughter's 25 now. I think it was about a little before she was born. Mm-hmm. It happened to a very young boy in mm-hmm. U.S., Mm-hmm. in a big community in in, um, in Alachua. Mm-hmm. He was going through so much stuff. Mm-hmm. And next morning, they found his body hanging in front of the tree oh in the jungle. God. I'm telling oh you, it happened two, three times. It's very, very sad. It's the mm-hmm. hard connection, you know. The devotees want to be feel accepted. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's all about the heart. They want to be loved. They want to yes. be accepted. They want to be warm, no matter what their stuff is. And even if they have stuff, it's okay. We will mm. walk the journey together and we'll clean up the anarthas. Don't beat me up for it, you know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I really like Silpish Prabhu's point. Setting boundaries and really talking about it and saying that you don't like the way you are treated. And I think that's a very important thing that I feel that we have to start speaking and reinstating our position as um as spirit souls mm-hmm. yeah we get training at the at the work as well like you know to deal with if suppose uh, your seniors are behaving like that with you you need to learn how to deal with it as well mm-hmm. because so many times that happens that there's equal colleagues you can deal with them but when there's a thing between like conflicts between a senior manager and yourself it becomes really really difficult yeah or a director and yourself like you're dealing with high authority and it is really hard how to get through that situation and how to act in that particular situation as well so these these points are really important yeah Absolutely. I'm so I'm sorry for taking so much time off your time. <laughs> you should be speaking, not me. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> okay, Mataji, you're a senior. <laughs> I, I, I completely appreciate your help. Thank you. So, uh, for what Shilpesh Prabhu mentioned, uh, one really nice point I liked is uh, going an extra mile. So, um, that is actually uh, when we when we become humble, when we overcome a little of our false ego, only then we can go an extra mile for somebody, which is so rewarding. So um, I I completely agree because this this is actually when we don't uh, you know gel with somebody it is very difficult for us to go an extra mile for the person so you really have to get humble for that and uh, I, that that is one a uh, real good practice or i can say um, uh, overcoming your false ego for that uh, which can really be rewarding thank you for mentioning that point i really like it as they say, kill it with kindness. Just that little extra step. Yeah, good point. But yeah, selfish people. Yeah, that was a lot, a lot of good points. You know how we can mend relationships and uh, dance without bumping into the elbows. <laughs> that was the best advice Bhakti Mark Swami gave. And every time I see him and I tell him, he says, "Really, I told you that." I said, "Yes, Marjan, you saved my life with that." <laughs> and I always tell him that. It's really, really powerful. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so grateful for all this discussion and good points raised by everyone. Thank you. It, it helps. It really helps because we go through it every day, Prabhu. We go through it every time. You know, like like a, a, I'll tell you a, a quick joke. Like like this this person that you know that thank God she works remotely, but I think a few years back before COVID, she was going to come for our annual Christmas party and I said I ain't going for that because you, that's how much I couldn't stand her you know yeah, I and, can and, and believe me because she would oh my god oh Krishna <laughs> Chaitanya and I knew that she had a miserable life you know so I was so upset at that time I told my PM my project manager I said, if she and they had this the Christmas party in um, that big boat, whatever you call the Washington Spirit Cruise or something, something like that. Mm-hmm. And out in, in New York on the Hudson River. And, and I told my team, if I see her, 
She says, one wrong word to me, I'm pushing off the deck. I was so <laughs> mad, you know, I was so, and thank God she didn't come. So I, you know, it was so bad. I, I, I had to pray, but now when I deal with her, I've learned, read the thing, don't let it bother you, just breathe, address, address the content, and one line, finish, don't let her crap get to you, and I've learned that so well, but yes. Yeah, hard ways, but, but it helps. <laughs> It helps it because we, we all go through it, you know, whether it yeah. be in devotional or non-devotional mm -hmm. communities, mm -hmm. we go through it. And, and, and I think for that, this is you know, this with this person at my job, it helped me to learn how to not get myself affected mm -hmm. and to be strong and just look for the content and address the need. Don't get into her own world you know like, mm -hmm. like I had to and it's it's and it was one of my biggest anarthas that I had mm -hmm. to deal with so Krishna always knows what he's doing at the yeah. end of the day pretty that much is so you know. true. that is yeah. absolutely true absolutely does yes but really nice question Sukhavaha Prabhu and really um good question that we've had a very nice discussion would like to ask devotees anyone else um would like to ask anything please do jump right in that we've had some yes Revati go ahead yeah Hare Krishna Mataji <laughs> thank you so much uh, very very beautiful class and uh, thank you Namrita Mataji so many beautiful points you have shared uh, thank you Ansuya Mataji very beautiful realizations very practical tips uh, I really like the point which you said, and I and I still face this uh, problem. As you said, that more you allow yourself, others to bother you, the more you carry that moats, and uh, it weakens our position. I still face this challenge a lot, but as you said, like you know, um, uh, we need to strengthen our heart, which is uh, very important. Uh, so, uh, so how to? You have any more tips on that, Madhuji? like um you know um i had it's interesting because my one of my biggest challenge um that i had to learn you know growing up in christian quote unquote growing up in krishna consciousness is how to learn to say no because i would i was a people pleaser big time people pleaser it was so bad that even my health got affected i mean i ended up in the hospital it was really 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 bad I had to learn to say no and and it took me a while to say no and but I had to I had to take help from my god sisters my senior god sisters who really helped me would come up to me and tell me Anasuya you look tired sit down take a break Anasuya this is enough you can't handle sometimes they would really take my daily roster and say okay there's no room for you to breathe stop it you know, so I had to take help. I couldn't do it on my own only. I had to reach out, you know, like in one of the six loving exchanges by Shiva Shri Rupa Goswami, he says to reveal one's mind in confidence mm -hmm. and to inquire submissively. So sometimes we have this fear, you know, that, oh, if I reveal my mind in confidence, people are going to know my crap. They're going to know my stuff. They're going to know my weakness. They're going to know that I'm all this messed up mental person you know but that's not it when we find the right person that we can reveal our mind and confidence to that person will be our buddy to help us come out of whatever we are going through you know so it's very important that we have a devotee who that we can lean on and tell us look this is my challenge i want to be strong help me to be strong and they will help us walk that journey you know, so we have to be in the right association, leaning on to the right devotee, really getting into our chanting and really praying. Like Namrata said, prayer really works. We pray to the Lord and say, Krishna, I want to be strong. I don't want this to affect me. Please help me. Show me. He will show the way. And in fact, one of um, and, you know, another thing that I always do is that whenever I'm very bothered, whenever I'm very concerned, I'm care, you know, I'm very whatever. I always go to my spiritual master's picture. I talk mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. I talk to him. I literally sometimes when I have to go to the temple, like every day I do the noon offering during the weekday and I'm driving to the temple while I'm driving. It's a, it's a, it's a 17 minute drive. I'm literally talking to my spiritual master. Like mm -hmm. he's like as if he's sitting right next to me in my seat. Like we 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 need help, you know. So 
talk to them, you know, pray to them, lean on a devotee to help us become strong, not to allow us to become weak. Because we have to be strong to carry on Prabhupada's mission. We have to be able to see our anarthas and deal with it healthily, you know. But we definitely, we have to go into our reading, into our chanting, you know. Hearing is so important. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why uh, I think Namata was mentioning, right? Shravanam, Kirtam, Vishnu, Smaranam. Mm -hmm. Shra you know, the first thing is Shravanam. The more we hear, the more it makes us stronger. The more we chant, the more it makes us stronger. The more we are in the right association, it makes us stronger. So the first few out of the nine will give us so much strength. The hearing, the chanting, the reading, the association, leaning on the right person to reveal our mind and confidence, to hold our hand to walk the journey and to come out of it. Mm -hmm. That really helped me. That really helped me. I hope that helped, Revati. Yes, yes, Mataji, definitely. Yeah, I'm trying to do those things. Uh, definitely in a daily call, Guru Maharaj uh, call, it really strengthens our heart. Yes. Hearing is so important. I mean, that is like, Prabhupada says, that is our sandwich program. Yeah. You know, it really works. But yeah, definitely re reveal our mind and confidence with one devotee that will not judge us, but will help us to our stuff you know that's mm -hmm. the important thing is we need to find someone that will not judge us and that will take us who we are mm -hmm. you know like a baby you know like if if the baby comes we won't say oh you're not you're not as pretty as i thought you would be we still love the baby <laughs> you know because yes. that's our child same thing with any devotee you know we have to lean on on a devotee that will accept us for who we are whatever our faults are and walk the journey with us and never leave us alone until we become strong and then we can walk it on our own two feet you know but yeah yeah that that's what helped me that's what helped me you know we 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 cannot weaken ourselves once we weaken ourselves it's like we let the guards down yeah I like the point which you said uh, we should find someone who can accept us as we are yes judging um, as that really helps us to you know strengthen our heart yes so again, because we need a non-judgmental friend hmm. we need a non-judgmental friend you know it's very very important only then will we feel uh that we are in a safe space to share anything without any judgment judgment yeah yes again it's a krishna's mercy to find a <laughs> devotee yeah. like that who can help us yeah Guru's mercy. Yes. Pray for that, and that will come to you. <laughs> yeah, that is the truth. Pray for that. <laughs> yeah. Pray for that, and the Lord will send you the right person who will not judge you and who will carry you mm -hmm. and help you through the journey. Pray for that. Always works. Yes, yes. yes. I was yes. listening to I, I, Revti Mataji. I was listening to Gaur Gopal Prabhu's class on this one as well. You know how to deal with your uh, uh, day to day life problems and uh, difficult person in your life. And he said the same thing that don't feel you are alone. They will, there are people who will help you and ask for the help. Don't feel that you can't ask for the help. You, you will get the help. So I completely agree with Ansia Mataji's point that definitely ask for the help. Yes, yes, Mataji. Even I pray to Lord Nasinga Dev a lot. Mm. <laughs> I have a small idol. I got it from uh, uh, Florida Temple, Alachua Temple. So mm -hmm. I really see a lot of miracles, like uh, whenever like I'm like uh, not in a, um, a very disturbed state, I really go and pray, I read like a uh, national couch also. I can really mm -hmm. see like the next day itself, I can see the mind will become like, you know, not disturbed and I feel like very happy again. <laughs> so it's really um, effective, Mataji, as you said, praying to Lord Nasimha Dev. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very nice point, Revati. Go ahead, Namrata. Um, it's your floor. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Mataji, for the beautiful points. I would just like to add uh, one thing that um, from Kanchanabhya Prabhu's class, uh, once he was mentioning that uh, being devotees, we, we are really tolerant. Uh, we uh, are in the mood of service. Everything is good, but it is very important for uh, us to care for ourselves as well. 
self-care is equally important for us. So um, we should not uh, give service to others and at the same time let others harm us uh, in any way. So um, if you will, if you will care for your own self, then you will be able to stand for your own self. Uh, so then you will be able to find somebody for your own self. So self-care is one very important thing. And uh, in self-care itself, I feel uh, making safer distance, um, that is one thing which uh, really helps when you can't deal with somebody. As uh, Ansuya Mataji says that you don't want to uh, bang your help. Also. <laughs> so um, even I have that uh, personal experience that you know uh, the person I'm very much dutiful to materially, of course, but there is no way out of my duty uh, with that person. So I have to be dutiful to that. But then the person very much triggers me. So what to do? But then I do have to take care of my own self. I can't keep, uh, I can't let that person, you know, hurting us, hurting me over and over again. So making a safe distance and you have to be dutiful because it's your duty. You can't escape that. But then uh, self-care and making a safer distance is equally important. That, that's what I feel. Thank you. Self-care is amazing, um, I, I agree. It's so important that we we have time for ourselves. Yes. Yes, Revati, go ahead. Yes, Mataji. Thank you, Navrata Mataji, for raising that point. Uh, Self-care is really very, very important. That's when like your heart will strengthen and you can really do some meaningful service. Uh, yeah. So, Mataji, also I have this challenge, like, you know, when we always say, like, you know, offenses towards devotees, criticizing devotees. So, sometimes it happens like you know if we really face some challenges with the devotees so we cannot criticize we cannot talk about them and uh, but uh, how are we going to resolve like you know if we don't uh, you know fault finding is also not uh, good with the devotees but we know that is something is really not you know the way we are treated and um, so how should we like solve that uh, issue without like you know doing uh, you know talking about these things Go ahead, Namrata. <laughs> you, you can answer this better. I, I think I, I can answer after you. So criticizing, um, criticizing is different from constructive feedback. Mm -hmm. Two different points. Criticizing is pretty much fault finding. See, the problem is in today's age is we are trying to find fault with no solution. When there's no solution, it's fault finding. Fault finding, we're just trying to find fault because we want to be the better person. That's fault finding. We just want to find, you know, I mean, I, I come across that you're trying to find some fault to make that person feel like the person is very small. And I'm like, wow, look at me, I'm odd. That's fault finding. That's, you know. So rather than fault finding, we should love find. Now, what does that mean is that when we see something wrong, rather than saying, oh my God, you know, and that happened to me 50 years back, you know, um, we had a, I forgot what festival we had in the temple. And we had a picture of, I, I think it was Ram Nomi. I think it was Ram Nomi. And we were doing Pushpa Abhishek for this, for a nice picture of Lord Ram. And we didn't have a stand to put the picture. And uh, so I could, there was no vase, there was no stand, there was nothing to hold that picture so it wouldn't fall. So I took a stack of Bhagavad Gita books and I let the picture lean against the Bhagavad Gita. And within a couple of hours, my first well one of the many fault findings started and it went around two three devotees you know and then later on i got a call from one devotee and said that you know this this person said you know that whoever set up the picture against the bhagavad gita was in maya i said that was me <laughs> thank you <laughs> you know i was in maya i said 
I did that because I couldn't find anything to hold a picture. And I said, I did that because that was the only thing I'd find was Bhagavad Gita. He says, oh, Mataji, I'm so sorry that it was you. I said, why are you saying sorry? You know, I said, whoever did that, rather than coming and criticizing, they could have went out and got a, something to put the picture up, you see? So that, that, that's fault finding. Fault finding is someone that wants to look, that is always looking for something bad. So we want to be a love finder. Love finder is when we see something wrong, we make it better. Mm. That's love finding. Rather than sitting and saying this, 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 this. No, it's like, how can I make it better? That is love finding. So there's no point of fault finding if we cannot make it better. It's just a waste of time. So we have to switch it from fault finding to love finding. Because love finding means we're trying to find something that we can do to add more love to make it better. That's pretty much it. Criticism is also, to me, criticism is gossiping. It's pretty much gossiping because we're trying to criticize the same thing. We're trying to criticize talking bad without a solution. Mm -hmm. Rather than talking bad without a solution, better to give a constructive feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, so because criticism, because criticizing is literally gossip, because when you have a bunch of people talking about bad about someone, it's gossip. Talking bad about someone with no solution is, is gossip. So it's how to turn it to positive. How can I make it better? How can I improve it? How can I add more love to it? How can I do more service for this person? You know, so and so forth. That is how we have to switch our minds from criticism to constructive feedback and from fault finding to love finding. And, and, and sadly, people who fault find they themselves lack love that's what it is because they themselves don't have love so they are looking for love so rather than looking for love they're looking for faults so we have to pray for those who are fault finders so that they become love finders and for those who are criticizing they themselves are you know um my father used to always say when you and we've heard this before you know when one finger is pointing at someone, three fingers are pointing back at us. And we, we forget how many other people are criticizing us. <laughs> it's a circle of life, as they say, you know. So it's, so we shouldn't be caught up in the criticism. And if we see someone criticizing, we should either correct it, stop it, or walk away. Mm. Not be part of it. And once we hear it, we have to change it literally have changed <clears throat> so when when we hear someone's okay fine this is your concern how can we rectify the solution that is constructive feedback as opposed to just sitting and talking about all the criticisms that is plain gossip mm -hmm. I, I i i hope that helped Revati. Yes, I, I don't yes, so if we have any challenges still you can go for a solution yes gossiping yes like, like I read in one of um uh, I, I I read this quote by Bhakti Chaturaswami, and and I really you know um encourage devotees to read Bhakti Chaturaswami's Vaishnav etiquette. It's beautiful. He says that when a junior sees a senior doing something wrong, the junior devotee should go to his mentor and rather than criticizing, you know, I saw this devotee do da -da 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 -da. He says, you yeah. ask your mentor what is the right thing to do in this situation and then the mentor will say okay this is how you do it he goes oh because this is what i saw this devotee doing i don't know if it's right or wrong you should come in that way wow. you know so it's just a choice of words and how we address it. if we go through a challenge We'll ask this, you know, we'll ask our seniors, our, you know, our mentors, our buddies, or our God says, so, you know, say, you know, I is like, I'll, I'll use a very simple example, like, um, and this happened in my temple a few years ago, and I was very unhappy about it. A senior devotee was um, doing arti on the altar, and he's about 20 years senior, actually, from this person who was criticizing him. 
And his junior god sister, literally in the middle of the arti, went up and told him, you have it wrong. Something with the deity worship. And I was thinking, what are you, what, what is going on during Aarti that you're having this conversation? Then after the Aarti, <laughs> the next day I asked him, I said, Prabhu, what was this Mataji telling you, you know, during the Aarti? And he, and he said, oh, she was correcting me. I said, excuse me? I said, a junior is correcting a senior? I said, no, 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 no. This is not going to happen. So I, I told her, I said, if you see a senior doing something wrong, you go and tell your mentor, what is the right? way to do arti let your mentor tell you this 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 and then you tell your mentor i saw this devotee doing so i wasn't sure how no, to do it so you get it clarified hmm. so that is how you do it you know rather than that is how we address challenges. That is how we address yeah. questions and doubts and inquiries and clarification, as opposed to going the back and going up and just, you know, criticizing. I, I hope that helped, Revati. Yes, yes, Mataji. So we can still like go to the mentors and yes. uh, address the challenge and uh, yes. whatever decision they give, we can. Yes. Yeah, so it's okay if he, it's not criticizing, as you said. We are going. It's the to... choice of words. Yes, okay. It's the choice of words and the mindset. Mm. Once we have a good choice of words and how we are approaching it, why we are approaching it, mm -hmm. are we approaching it just to criticize because it's so much fun to do, or are we approaching it because we want to know the right thing to do? Okay. Yes, Mataji. You know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Go ahead, Namata. It's yours. I think you've so, I said pretty much, Mataji. I, I could just remember one verse. I, I don't know which is that verse, but it said that if if you uh, are seeing uh, any criticism for a devotee, so um, either you have to cut the tongue of the devotee, either um, you have to kill him, or either you walk out of that place. I, I do not know the exact reference. Nectar but, of uh, instruction. I, it, it, it's one of the verses in Nectar of instruction, yes. Yeah, so uh, strong. maybe in Kali Yuga, first two you cannot do, but the uh, last one you can do, obviously. So uh, one can um, choose to just walk away because the if anyone is having a, any problem, at least one should try to resolve it either by saying to that person itself or at least if the person cannot uh, you know directly be communicate at least uh, one person who can help communicate that's it i mean uh, the the fault finding should not be uh, the means of pleasure when it comes to means of pleasure then uh, it it is uh, making you fall down so that is what i had to say thank you that's a very good point. Yeah, absolutely. I hope that helped, Revati. Yes, Mataji. Thank you, Namrata. Yeah. See, you. because we were going to face challenges. You know, that's, I mean, like, like we said, when we say yes to Krishna, we are declaring war with Maya. So we are going to face challenges, especially in the relationships. Because that, and why is that so? Because we have to come to, to the platform where we are able to de deal with different kinds of relationships and not get affected. But we, for that to happen, we're going to go through a lot of uh, anarthas, you know, like, you know, when, when you turn the fan on, the dust will keep flying around until you turn it off. You know, so this is how it says is that there's a lot of a lot of internal work, a lot of internal work. So it's just how we address it, how we discuss it. What is the goal of addressing the challenge or the situation or the concern or the issue and where we want to get to it? You know, as opposed to just sitting and talking and just sitting because it's just sitting and talking. That's just waste of your time and my time pretty much so yeah it's definitely um advisable I and mean, that that's why you know in the nectar of instruction one of the six loving exchanges is to reveal one final conference and to inquire submissively so we can so when you have a challenge we go to our seniors to our mentors and we inquire submissively to get clarification yeah thank you i like that the solution you should always keep that point solution we are doing yeah it. yeah 
yeah. you know, and, and how we can make it better, not just talk, how we can make it better, how we can improve the service, how we can, you know, do better for the devotees, that should be the goal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Any other questions from devotees? Your class has given up a lot of, a lot of questions, Namrata, like really hard connection questions. Amazing. Yes, even I wasn't expecting so much discussion. <laughs> it's like, you know, and, and it's all about relationships and and that's what Krishna is all about, relationships, you know? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Any other questions from devotees? Any thoughts that's coming to your mind, reflections, thoughts? Hare Krishna. Thoughts? Go ahead. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you so much, uh, Namrata Mataji, for a nice class and uh, thank you for all the discussion. Really thought-provoking uh, questions and uh, comments and Nanusaya Mataji thank you so much for nice tips and sharing your experiences I just want to thank you all um, but I was thinking like when we are criticizing or when we are fault finding um, but yeah it's a bad habit I, I also um, heard this uh, um, from I think Kanchanam Chaprabhu or somebody uh, said this like you have to find uh, love where you are finding fault but that is very difficult Mataji in practice <laughs> it's it's very difficult because our mind is always thinking about the bad things happening or the negative only always on the negative it's very hard to divert your mind and do that and also if any situation comes like where we can't do anything like it's a big congregation and it's a seniors lot of seniors and uh, you are the one who didn't like uh, because as gurmas once said what is it bothering in you um, you have to find out that um, so that, uh, yeah, sometimes it will help us to, to think and change our mind and do that. But again, it will keep on bothering you. So then it's something uh, we should, I, I feel that I should walk away from that particular situation or from that particular um, group of people so that um, uh, it's better not to criticize, not to, instead of staying away from them, helps me. Um, not to criticize them or not to bother about them because if I am in between them then only I'll do that right so if I'm not there then I'll def definitely move out uh, if I move out from that situation or that group definitely it will be easy on my mind and uh, I'll not do more aparadha that's what I feel um, but it's not practically happening I'm trying to do but Guru Maharaj also gave some suggestions but mainly, I always remember what Guru Maharaj says always, what is it in you bothering that um, actual that situation? What is it in you bothering? You have to always look into that. Um, uh, that's all, Mataji. I just want to share that. Thank you. That's a very good point because sometimes when we are in a group of devotees and we don't feel, you know, like we are, we are a good fit, like you said, like Maharaj said, yeah, we have to see what is it that's bothering. And 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 if you see again the point that 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 Maharaj said, it's still in you know, it's still an internal work. Yeah, it's it's all from the heart. It's all the yeah, heart. it's all our ego and yeah. um, um, and I uh, want to get attention. <laughs> Suppose if yeah. I'm not getting any attention, then I feel bad. Okay, oh, yeah. what is it? Why I'm here? <laughs> yeah, and also like um, if I if my ego is not satisfied then also so a lot of things are there Mataji um, it, it that's why um you know it's um one one way that we can um uh resolve this is you just serve them yeah yes Mataji and be a quiet servant you know yeah I'm trying you to know, be like that because um, sometimes uh that will take a long way but sometimes you know we have to see what is it that's bothering me inside and really address that need because sometimes whatever is bothering us inside we ignored it within ourselves like this like the point that namata was saying self-care you know mm -hmm. the reason that thing is bothering us is because we ignore to take care of that self within us Mm. so we have to nourish that need within us in a healthy way of course not in the limelight or being sound of attraction so we have to okay that need is what i ignored in myself because i did not care for myself so how can i nourish that need within me that's why this thing is bothering me 
And it can be anything from chanting, probably from doing service, probably from giving prasadam to this person as a gift, you know, just reciprocating, you know, <laughs> because so. sometimes that need, we, we ignore that need within our hearts. Yes, Mataji, once Guru Maharaj said, um, um, whoever you don't like, invite them to your house and feed nice prasadam and give gifts. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult. It is very difficult. Let me tell you, because um, because that because why we, we have to crack our ego for that. It's very, yeah. very, very, very difficult. That is an extra mile, I think. It's yeah. the extra mile that Silfish Prabhu was saying. So what I would suggest, is if it's very, very difficult, the one step that I find that really works is you give a gift without them knowing it came from you. Oh, <laughs> like what we call a secret center, <laughs> you know, yeah. you just give a gift and leave it on the door porch in the front of their house or leave it something with their name and, you know, and they don't even know who it came from, you know, at least once a year, we play that game in our temple where we call secret pen pal, you know, we play that game with, among the devotees, the mothers, and we exchange gifts. You know, whether it can be anything for six months and then they reveal themselves and it breaks the ice, <laughs> you know, so so that's that's one way to start serving so that you can at, at least feel, OK, now I can talk to this person now that ego has been, you know, we have to find some way because even giving gifts is also very nice that we feel you know but then that will help to break that ego down slowly we take the, the small extra miles you know and sometimes if you find yourself very bothered in a particular group that it's affecting you and you're becoming like one of them step away yeah it's very dangerous step away and re-fortify yourself yes you know when we get affected being in that group that means we are not strong that mm. means we are not strong that's what it means that means we have become one of them when yeah. we are in a group and we are not affected then you know okay krishna you've made me strong thank you now make me stronger you know like yeah. that but if we get affected and we come like one of them that means we are we have weakened our position and we have allowed ourselves to be learned because we are not strong so that means we gotta step away and fortify ourselves and then come back and be strong again you know like 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 in a battlefield when the warrior is hurt that the warrior has to go to, to the paramedics to get treated to, to come back and fight again like that you know it's it's all about how to really make ourselves spiritually strong hmm. not materially but spiritually strong when we are spiritually strong you know we can definitely uh be able to deal with all this like if we think of our spiritual masters you know they are so spiritually strong anywhere they go <laughs> they somehow can adjust yeah. immediately because they are so spiritually strong by Prabhupada's mercy and shakti yes Mataji, we also see a little bit um, um in ourselves but uh yeah, even though we go to any non devotees association or any uh, any parties like that, yeah, we definitely see some change in a, like we are a little strong, not going yes. carried away with those things. Yes. But uh, yeah, but you as you said, we have to make more stronger so that not uh, many things will not affect us. Yeah. Um, anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes if you're in, in a group of devotees and they're having, which I do a lot with with the women in my temple, you know, because. I, I guess gossip is more, more among, well, it's on both men and women. The thing is that the men talk about sports and politics and the women talk about saris and whatever else. I don't know what they talk about. But when, <laughs> whenever I go to the, you know, to the prasadam table, you know, because I, during, after the Sunday program, and when I hear them talking about something, I just poke my nose and I switch the topic. I just switch it up because I know that what they're talking is just time pass. <laughs> it's yeah. nothing productive and fruitful. You know, we should, when we come together, we should try to think of a topic or something that we learned and say, wow, you know, this is, this has really helped me in my spiritual life. Now I can see how this is going to help me. And then we tend to discuss during Prasadam time, 
not about JC Penny and Macy's and this sale and my father did this, my mother did this, my kids did this. This is an everyday story, you know? So I, I will poke my nose and I switch it up. That's what I do. That's another way you can do when you're in a group of devotees, when they're talking something, you just change the topic. Yeah, I have to do that, Madhi. Even I think that same. <laughs> Even change I have the to topic. That switch same. it up. <laughs> switch it up, you know? Absolutely. Because that's how, um, you know, Maya is so strong. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Even though she is Krishna's agent, <laughs> Krishna's <laughs> devotee, but she's so strong. She's always testing us. She's always saying how to switch it up, how to switch it up, how to switch it up, you know, especially among devotees, you know. But yeah, that's one way to do rather than stepping away, see if you can switch up the conversation. You do. That's one way to do it's it, too, it, you know. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Um, I think almost it's like almost two hours. Almost nine so. o'clock. Yes. Yeah. It's only by your mercy that we're getting all these wonderful questions. <laughs> this is you as a wonderful host, no, Mataji. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I'm just a servant. Das, das, anu das. It's all your mercy. Thank you so much for this wonderful class. And thank you to all the devotees for joining us. It's such a beautiful heartfelt really heartfelt open personal conversation i really really appreciate this have a wonderful day hari hari thank you